Hello, welcome to another episode of SG Explain. Hey, how's it going, everyone? All right, of course, today we have a special guest today. His name is Gregory. Say hi. Hey, what's up? Yeah, and uh, of course, um, Gregory is a really special guest today. In fact, he's so special, he's, he was actually gifted. Yes, uh, <laughs> he is one out of, uh, well, he's the only one amongst us who's gifted as well. Technically, statistically, yeah. all right, they said like it's about 0.25% of the population or something. Like that. Oh, yeah? Yeah, that you can actually qualify for this. Well, yeah. how many people are here in your office that are gifted? Um, probably only two. <laughs> so <laughs> you, you are below yeah. the average. I'm, I'm way below the average, <laughs> in yeah. In employing. Yeah. Per- so anyway, guys, if you don't know and you're tuning in today, today's topic we're going to be talking about is the gifted education program. Mm-hmm. Of course, some of you may have already grown up uh, living through that. Some of you may not actually know what exactly is the gifted education program. But today, we're going to be talking about it and whatever happened to it in the first place. I think some of us, when we grow older, we don't know what's going on. Right. Do, you know, do you know what happened to the gifted education program? No, I have no idea. But no idea. Yeah. It's way bad for me. How many years did you spend in the gifted education program? <laughs> Okay, yeah, maybe so a bit of background for the viewers uh, on, on, on how I got into the gifted education program. Um, I, I went in when I was primary four, and oh. I spent three years in Henry Park Primary School. So for all those who recognize where I've been, you know, they might, they might, they might uh, sort of understand. Uh, and then after that, I went to the a, uh, ACSI, where I spent yeah, six years in their SBG program, basically the continuation of the gifted education program. Oh, I see. Yeah, so all the way to 18, I was, or maybe to 16, you know, I was considered uh, in, that, in that program. What does, see, yeah. what does SBGE mean? Oh, I really, I can't remember. Oh yeah, <laughs> it was just an, it was just an acronym. But I think GE standard for gifted education. Actually, I think so we're gonna be we're, we're gonna be covering that as well. What's ah, the yeah. SBEG? But yes, okay. there is the SBG, and I think yeah. it exists for secondary schools or something like that. Oh okay. yeah. yeah, right. So yeah, thanks thanks for being on today's uh, uh yeah. program. Oh, I found out what SBGE is. Oh uh, yeah, school, school based. based gifted ah, education. there you go. Oh okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, um. So, I mean, today we really want to find out what exactly is the GP program. We don't know whether, uh, I mean, even for those who are, uh, who are tuning in as well, was it good or do you think it's bad? I think it's something that we'll, we'll, talk, we'll be talking about this. But just some, just some uh, establishing, today we'll be referring to people who are in the gifted education program as Jeeps. That's Jeeps, how we actually sure. call Oh, is it? Yeah. I call them jeepers. Are you call them jeepers? Yeah, I feel like, like creepers. Give, 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 give a take. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I was just, we were just, Ma- we were making jokes. Maybe it's jokes. my generation. Yeah, yeah, my generation is just, hey, that's a jeep. Oh, is it? Yeah. We were making jokes. Like, you could go all the way. You could go call, call someone a jeepy. You could call someone, uh, uh, I guess, jeepy is the only one I could think of. Uh, jeepy, <laughs> jeepers. Jeepers, jeep. jeepy. Yeah. Jeep height. <laughs> what, what's, what's that? <laughs> I don't I'm know. just adding like terms to Jeep. <laughs> I see. Okay. I mean, of course, definitely. I think one of the main important things is for those who don't know what the Jeep program is, maybe let's go down memory lane and actually find out what is the Jeep program, how it's established. Right. And then maybe we can go on to some really interesting sto- inter- interesting topics about, like, for example, uh, what, do you, what do you think about the Jeep program as a whole? Right. Okay. But first, let's dive right in. Okay. So what is the GB program? So... The GP, the Gifted Education Program, or GP in short, is a highly selective academic program in Singapore. Initially designed to identify the top 0.25%, later expanded to 0.5%, uh, then 1% of students from each academic year with outstanding intelligence. Oh, I thought you said 0.25 as in like one quarter. This is 0.25%. Yes. Oh, wow. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so the tests are based on verbal mathematical and spatial abilities as de- as determined by a two rounds of tests. So first round and then the second round. Right. So those students will, will then be transferred from normal classes to the GP classes. If those students are in a school without those classes, they will be transferred to another school with those classes of their choice. And the uh, those classes will bring the students to higher levels such as higher mother tongue, complex mathematics, uh, intensive science and a wider ex- uh, expand of English knowledge of facts. The program has now been expanded to 1% of the students for each academic year. So this is still ongoing? Yes, it is. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, so um, the, the Gifted Education Program was first implemented in school in 1984. Actually, revealing my age is that's when I was born. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> oh, now oh, we yeah. know. Now you know. <laughs> Episode 19, yeah. Willie reveals his age. <laughs> and with some public concern, it was... Uh, Initial uh, initiated by the Ministry of Education in line with its policy under the new education system to allow each student to learn at his or her own pace. 
The MOE has a commitment to ensure that the potential of each pupil is recognized, nurtured, and developed. It was recognized that there are pupils who are intellectually gifted, like this gentleman beside me, and that there should be extra help to reach their potential. Uh, beginning, with primary, uh, beginning with two primary schools and then two secondary schools, it has now expanded to nine primary schools as in October 2004 and was at its peak before the introduction of the I uh, integrated program. So yeah, so just to name off some of the, some of the schools as of 2018 that are still in the GP program. So we have uh, Anglo-Chinese school primary, so in, ACS primary, ACS yeah. primary, Catholic high school primary, Henry Park primary school, like you talked about, yeah, that's where yeah. you're from. Uh, Nanhua Primary, Nanyang Primary School, Raffles Girls Primary School, how do you pronounce this? Rosive. Rosive School, mm -hmm. St. Hilda's Primary School, and Daonan School. So, so I have some immediate reactions. Right, this. right. What is it? Right. Uh, and actually, I want to hear your views on this sure. as well. But, I mean, the first thing is I completely am a fan of, you know, giving uh, different students resources according to their needs. Right. 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 So, you know, if you need more focus in certain areas, you should get more resources there. Mm. Um, if you need more uh, leverage in order to get better at what you need to do, then okay. you need that. Uh, I'm, I'm curious, though, if primary school is the right place for you to put that pressure on a kid. Right. Right. Because if you, when you were told you were gifted at what? primary four primary yeah. four and the primary three even how was yeah. that experience for you like what is that like uh, i had no idea I had no idea um yeah maybe a bit of uh, context as to how they assess for the gp right so they got their, their verbal math and spatial reasoning tests right so um it was just, they just told you oh you're gonna take a test and now you're gonna you're gonna decide whether you are super smart or not and that's what that's what the rumor was going around the class so i at the time i was a very anxious child you know I'm still a fairly anxious adult, but uh, as a child, uh, yeah, I, I was. I remember actually, literally clinging to the foot of my of my sofa at home, you know, crying and trying not to go because I didn't want I didn't want to take this incredibly hard super genius test. Right. You know, so I went for it. I got to the second round, pulled at the, at the sofa again, you know, and surprisingly, I got in the GP. You know, so it's. It's, it, there's no there's no way for you to see how you perform actually as far as I remember mm. no. you know it's like yeah it's, they, don't, they don't show you any bell curve or any percentile so I had no idea what determined that I got in you know I had no idea what, some of the questions I, 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 I guess mm. it honestly could have been luck you know mm. I could have been maybe that top that 0 0.249 percentile you know it's uh, to that that, that but this day is still a mystery, right? Know? So, and you could yeah. be incredibly good looking as well. Oh, maybe. you've been in that apartment and got in, maybe, maybe, oh, maybe yeah. not the best way to assess a nine, a nine year old, but right. uh, I, mean, I didn't get in, right? Yeah. I was incredible. Don't look at me, yeah. right? I didn't yeah. get in too. Maybe uh, as a, assess how hot a nine year old this is, maybe not actually, right. Actually, right, right now, I, I just want to clarify. So, yeah. I know the first test is, is supposed to be mm. uh, English, mm. uh, mathematical, and spatial, right? But what is the yeah. second test? I think it was just more of the same. Um, what I do remember is sort of like the closest uh, example is something like IQ tests. You know, see the next mm. pattern, see right. the next word, uh, which number comes next, which uh, next, which word comes next. Right. So right. it wasn't anything like super esoteric, but I think they just judge your answer, just judge your answers, and you're like your critical thinking and inference abilities based on that. Right. You know? Right. Right. See. Yeah. No. So there. Are, so there are two tests. There's a screening test. And the selection test. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> so, so the screening test is basically your first cut, and then once you get filtered, then you go on to the selection test. Mm -hmm. So actually, I remember getting past the screening test. And I think a lot of people did. I don't think it, the screening test is really to cut too too many people off. Yeah. And then the selection test is where they cut it down to the zero point two five. I see. Off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but but we'll talk about that later. Let's. Uh, Let's yeah, let's, let's go on. Maybe also just to say, I think early on we talked about the primary schools offering GP program, right? right? I think next I want to say what are the secondary schools currently that is offering the GP or like you mm -hmm. mentioned earlier, the SPGE, yeah. right? Yeah, right. School-based <laughs> gifted education. Mm -hmm. So anyway, just to say the gifted education program came to a close in secondary schools in 2008, right? right? Uh, now in its place is the SBGE. Right. So I think I'm not, oh, so so in your time it was already SBGE. Yeah. I think in my time, yes. uh, it was uh, the uh, the GP program was still around. Right. Yeah. So anyway, the SBG or school based gifted education, all of the secondary schools that offer the SBG are IP schools, right? Integrated programs, 
there are generally two classes per cohort per year per level for SVG students, but sometimes there may only be one class per cohort depending on the size. So the schools that we know, once again, it is Anglo Chinese School Independent, so, so ACSI, Dunman High School, Hua Chong Institution, Nanyang Girls High School, NUS High School of Mathematics and Science, but well, that's a pretty new school, right? Uh, Raffles Girls School Secondary and RI Raffles Institution. Right. I mean, yeah. uh, the big part of why SBGE took over GEP was because of the IP program. Right. right. Itself. That's right. And basically, what happened was that uh, in 2004, uh, five secondary schools started implementing the IP with the affiliated junior colleges, mm. uh, and because of the fact that a lot of these IP basically has its own programs to cater to gifted students, it's part of the overall package, right? That's correct. Says, you know, now we have a longer uh, runway. Mm. I mean, for those who don't know what the IP program is, we should probably do an episode about it at some point. <laughs> uh, mm. But but the integrated program is where uh, instead of doing your O levels, mm -hmm. uh, you basically do a six year program where you know that you have the full six years to like explore different things. Right. And the idea is to give people the opportunity to explore stuff. So because of that, there was in within all, a lot of these integrated programs, we decided let's create our own track to allow people with special uh, uh, interests or abilities to explore that. Mm -hmm. So uh, this whole idea of being in a gifted program was right. no longer relevant mm. uh, because you know they were saying we have our own programs. So there were not many changes. Uh, so what, one of the ways that they did it was they repackaged the GEP as the SBGE. Uh, and, and that was how basically the IP program was able to reconcile it. According to uh, some of the research online, G, GEP pupils who do not wish to take the IP after 2008 can enroll in schools with the S SBGE program uh, or school-based uh, special programs at secondary one, right? Yeah, that's right. So they, they, they say like you have two, you have two chances. Basically right. it's like primary four, you can take the test. If you miss that, um, uh, post PSL, you can take the test to get into the GP program again. Right. Right. But it will be, of course you'll be under the SBGE, but mm -hmm. of course you seem like a true train, uh, from GP in primary school all mm -hmm. the way to the SBGE. Yeah. Yeah. Full pedigree. <laughs> full, full, full pedigree. Yeah. Uh, Jeep program. <laughs> yeah, program. Right. So yeah. there, so the schools that had special programs that were not SPGE. Uh, so these are the ones, for example, for students who do want to go into IP schools, right? Yeah. Those were ACSI, Catholic High, MGS, and SJI. Mm. So Methodist Girls School and St. Joseph's Institution. For those who don't know what the last two were. Mm -hmm. So it, it seems like you had offerings all across the board. Mm -hmm. Uh. Then again, these schools are also pretty much interesting uh, because of what Singaporeans would call the elitist uh, label that's attached to all of them. Right. Right. Uh, and I think that in itself is a conversation about education here in Singapore. It's very right. interesting. Mm -mm. Um, are, you, it, are you an elitist? Uh, uh, I think not. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Right, that's yeah, what absolutely. the leaders would say. Right, I mean, of course, definitely, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely, <laughs> definitely a, a large stigma in this, but <laughs> into these specific yeah. schools as well. Right. But I suppose these schools also had certain access to certain resources as well because of, I don't know, because of their alumni as well. Yeah, there's mm -hmm. something that uh, that's why they are also, uh, I suppose, better equipped sometimes. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, there are, there are a lot of reasons for this, and mm -hmm. it's a very big conversation in in Singapore about how certain schools, uh, by virtue of their programs create good alumni and those good alumni uh, reinforce the programs mm -hmm. right, by mm -hmm. basically funding or, or improving the status and access and all of this kind of stuff. Um, yeah. All right. So what, what exactly do GP students uh, do in the program? I think there's something really wonderful. What exactly did you do when you were in the GP mm. program? Okay. So I think what we learned is, well, it's considered at a higher critical thinking le uh, thinking level, more conceptual stuff. So I know, I think the closest example we, we found were, that I had was uh, in English, mm -hmm. uh, where we don't just learn about comprehension or composition or that. We learn about a something a bit closer to literature. Okay. So it's about perceiving, yeah, but yeah, perceiving literary texts, you know, rather than just uh, understanding the uh, surface level. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think this actually continued through my time in uh, ACSI. You know, so mm. it's more, yeah, again, more thinking out of the box. Um, so I can't remember too much of my math education, but it was, yeah, closer to like, like IQ tests, you know, something mm. along like how, how to infer, 
and yeah, how to be more analytical about about about. I remember things like patterns and all. So it's a yeah. yeah, it's quite a distant memory, but it's yeah, it's, it's just a little bit higher. So like how you have you have uh, Chinese and higher Chinese. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's that's the most relevant comparison I can think of. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. I see. Yeah. I see. So according, I mean, to 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 what what we found online, right, mm-hmm. is that. Uh, research project studies or RPS is introduced in primary yeah. four. I think that's what you did, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which is a program to teach skills needed in research. So, mm. and then you have things like for example, individualized study options, which is compulsory for mm. students in primary five, whereas pupils do research on a specific topic. Uh, the students are asked to come uh, to choose their own projects in primary five under mm. teacher mentors. And the student teacher ratio is normally from four is to one to five is to one. Normally, the study options given were individualized uh, research studies, IRS, innovation program, IVP, uh, s- students who actually mm. had to invent or improve things to solve everyday problems. Ah, uh, okay. Right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, now it's coming back. I think right. I did IRS and IVP. Right. Yeah. And then there's also uh, FPS. Mm. Not <laughs> no. Yeah, it, uh, future problem solving, where students solve future problems mm. we may face in society. So you, you get more like a, a creative problem solving kind of an environment. Mm-hmm. I mean, with all these different kinds of you had to as well. do this as a primary four and five year old. I kid? I think it was primary primary four and five were IRS and primary six was IVP IP. I know I don't I don't remember doing uh, FPS. Right, right. Yeah. So uh, indiv- uh IRS uh we kept individual individualized research studies was yeah basically do an essay or something. So what did you do your project. research on? Do you remember? <sighs> I really can't remember. I think what? mostly like science, maybe something science related or English related. I think we could have a choice of uh, one of four topics. Right. Yeah. Mm. Um, I totally cannot imagine mm. primary for me yeah. doing a research paper. Yeah. <laughs> but for what it's worth, it wasn't as bombastic as it sounds, you know, like right. it is still at a certain primary school level, you know, they're just trying to encourage it more. So things like um, maybe like PowerPoint presentations, you're still doing that. Uh, oh. I, mean, I think mm. I maybe remember uh, doing like, you know, like getting used to like PowerPoint like animation transitions, <laughs> things like that. You Did know, you but, use uh, Word Art? Was Word Art? Oh, uh, yeah, like, you know, like your real <laughs> rainbow, you know, 3D looks and all that. So, <laughs> these, I mean, I'm not sure how, uh, whether uh, primary school uh, students are still learning this, or, uh, I mean, learning this even in the, in the normal streams. But mm-hmm. I think that was, that, just the idea of being able to present uh, and, and research, and again, critical thinking. I mm-hmm. think that's maybe like the crux of it. Right. Yeah. Uh, maybe just to briefly go through what else that the, mm. I mean, the GP program also provides is uh, yeah. uh, students have to take social study as a graded subject, right? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, they also, in the GP program, you have to learn poetry and literature. I think mm-hmm. that they, they mentioned books like A Single Shot mm-hmm. in Primary 4 and The Giver in Primary 5. No. And Frederick in primary Frederick six. was horrible. Yeah, uh, yeah. So <laughs> it's the same books. <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't remember the other, the other two, but I remember Frederick and Frederick and A Wrinkle in Time. Yeah, A Wrinkle in Time was also horrible. It was so so abstract, you know, that I I I can't even remember half of it. Um, like I mm. remember like the main character Charles well, Wallace or something. The the, the movie's out, so right, <laughs> right. right. Yeah. And, and so they do different yeah. process writing based on the genres they have studied, including mystery and fairy tales. Well, it's quite intense doing such yeah. analysis. And then of course mm. in primary six, a graded mathematical alternative assessment, math AA, mm. uh, is given. So this sounds like a really high level amount of mathematics you have to do at primary mm. six. Well, I mean, yeah. make the example of like the level of stuff we had to learn. Like Friedrich was about uh. Was, was about the World War, the right. War Two. So it's about uh, the author befriends a young Jewish uh, kid named Friedrich, and slowly he sees his life being like stripped away, you know, mm-hmm. from being more privileged to being having his parents taken away and all that. So to your ex- yeah, as, I'll say you ex- as a as a primary five kid, eleven years old, we exposed to World War brutalities, you know, so mm. or at least in the written form, you know. Right, so, right, right. Yeah, maybe that's just an example of the the conceptual learning. Right. I I remember my literature text when I was in secondary one was uh, mm. I am David. <laughs> I don't know why I did this. <laughs> I love that book. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm David. Yeah. And of course, it, it David. sounds like a lot of these things are basically secondary school topics mm-hmm. just brought okay. forward. Mm-hmm. Right. And and maybe at an easy level, but the, the kind of thinking exactly. I mean, mm-hmm. when you go into secondary one, as long as you're doing, I can only speak about my O level experience. I'm mm-hmm. not too sure what happens at the N level experience. But at the O level experience, for sure, these things become your main uh, mood of thought, right? Because your primary mm. school is all about memorizing, gaining basic skills. Right. And then once you start going to secondary school, then they start teaching you analytical skills. Right. And then finally, at you know, at junior college or poly level, 
starting to think about how do you create your own work, mm. right? Uh, mm. So I can definitely see the the intention of the GEP sounds like they want to bring some of these analytical skills earlier mm -hmm. and to get people to to start just getting acquainted with those things. Is mm. that is that yeah. what you felt? Um, not at the time. I remember a lot of it was me struggling to catch up. Actually. Oh yeah. Oh. Yeah. I, would I, you I, say Would you say that was just you, or would you say that was everyone? starting to feel like, you know, this is weird, why are we doing this? I feel like a fair amount of standouts. Those, like, you know, you, you can tell that they're just uh, high achievers by nature. Right. You know, the ones that, you know, clearly coasting into a 270 level for PSLE. Sure. And also, um, yeah, they were our successful ones. And, yeah, and, but then there were a lot of, uh, I mean, to put it bluntly, weirdos, you know? Right. Like, I, I was, I was an anxious, nervous wreck when I was in there. Right. You know, mm -hmm. I've seen guys that, yeah, that break down very frequently. I've seen guys that, yeah, I would say it took a lot of time to develop to develop social skills. But I know them now and they are just better than ever. No, That's lead. good. Yeah. No, I see. Yeah. And speaking of, I mean, earlier we talked about different schools that sound almost like elite, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I, what happened, I think in the future, uh, what happened now is that MWE was trying to also combat this thing called elitism, right? Mm -hmm. So in um, in 3rd of November, I think the Straits Sunday reported that MWE announced its new scheme to encourage greater integration between the GP program kids and as well as the mainstream students. This was in 2007. Yeah, yeah. this is in 2007. Uh, and so to encourage, to combat elitism, according to them, and encourage socialization. So GP students in the nine primary GP centers would spend up to 50% of their lesson time with the top two to 5% of the cohort or the top mainstream students. Oh, wow. So when they say integrate with mainstream <laughs> students, yeah. they mean quite specifically the top 5%. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. that's also so weird <laughs> in the way that they do the policy, right? Can you imagine the policy conversation around this? Right. right? They were like, all right, we need to encourage integration, but we don't want to integrate them with the whole school because, <laughs> you know, what if they become, like, exposed to stupid thinking? <laughs> right? Let's just expose them to the top 5%. Right, I don't, I don't know if that's what happened, but it sounds like when they came up with this policy that that's like that, why would you release that number top two to five percent? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, I'm not sure, man, but guess I suppose it does does sort of imply something like that as well. Yeah, I mean the top two, two to five percent. Why not the top fifty percent of the cohort? Right? Wait, wait, 2007. This was a we we were yeah. already out of. I was already sec three, but then yeah, right, right. Yeah. right. So it was really. Uh, oh, I see. It was really secretary. Right. right. This would, I mean, so continuing, this would do activities such as studying with them, okay? <laughs> also, non core activities such as art and music are conducted with mainstream cohort. The announcement of the integration uh, <laughs> much buzz on the blogosphere. The oh, duh. yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. Mm. Okay. I, yeah, but, but definitely, I think um, there, there are a lot of things around the GP, I think that's kind of like a question mark. And I think right. coming to this point, we talked about, we talked already about uh, combating. Uh, elitism, but there, there are some, there are actually additional things that is worth discussing as well. Mm, right. And one of the things I want, I mean, number one, I really want to talk about this thing called the P uh, Pygmalion or Golem effect. Essentially, is that uh, if people, if the teachers were, exp were exposed to kids who say that they're they're really good, then they would actually consider to teach or treat them like really good kids. Right. And if you're exposed to say that these kids are really bad, the teachers will then. Uh, adjust themselves to say, oh, these are really bad kids. I would then teach them in a in a way uh, how I should treat bad kids. Right. And so I, I think uh, just just highlighting this, uh, there is this thing called the Rosenthal Jacobson study. All right. So uh, there was uh, there were students in a single California elementary school were given a, this this guy's IQ test at the beginning of the study, and these scores were not disclosed to teachers. The teachers were then told some of the students, about 20% of the school were chosen at random, could be expected to be intellectual bloomers. Right. It was right, intellectual elite. So that year, doing better than expected in comparison to their classmates. So it's just a suggestion. Right. right. The bloomers' names were made known to the teachers. At the end of the study, all teachers were again tested with the same IQ test. And at the end of the day, the bloomers actually did better than the ones who were not, were not named as uh, uh, more, uh, more intelligent. Right. So it's like kind of like... Uh, um, self-fulfilling prophecy don't yeah. you think so i mean yeah. the number of times where i personally have you know by virtue of me being in environments where someone says like this is for the brightest and talented mm. you know once you're there everyone starts treating each other the same way even mm. in the class right i right. actually want to hear some of your stories about your classmates as well because what i think is interesting is that it is it is a self-fulfilling prophecy sometimes. right uh as 
especially at such a young age, mm. right? When you are talking about primary school kids, um, there, there's a lot of implicit assumptions here that I think it's important to point out, mm-hmm. right? Number one assumption is that there is a certain kind of talent that makes you gifted, right? right? So GP, uh, math, uh, English, and then a certain level of general knowledge, right? Uh, general ability. Uh, and you know how they said non-core activities like arts and music, <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, uh, you know, will mix you with the mainstream for both. Right, right. right. It, it says something about what they think talent and giftedness looks like. Mm. Right. The second is that in order for gifted people to thrive, you need to be separate. Mm. Right. Uh, that is an assumption, right? And then, I mean, I'm sure one thing that we've learned over time is that uh, to a degree, uh, the giftedness. Uh, that is relevant to today's society is being able to be gifted and, 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 and brilliant, especially with diversity, especially with different kinds of people and especially with different levels of skills. But I suppose, I suppose as well, like since we're talking about the Rosenthal Jacobson, right? It's right. quite apparent that um, by placing people into a specific area with better influence, right? Or supposedly better influence, right. would you even, even better outcomes as well? Right. So, even I would say that well so again that yeah. was my third assumption mm. is that the outcome that you're measuring yeah is indicative of what is important to society and in mm. this case these are scores mm. right these are, are grades in your exams or grades in in certain tests uh and yes you know these even in in the rosenthal jacobson mm. uh study the what was being evaluated was a score right, right at the end uh but then your idea of a school is well, a very limited maybe let's, idea. Let's ask yeah. Gregory. Yeah. I mean, Greg, what, what do you think? Do you, do you think that by going through it, mm-hmm. uh, they were like, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy that people become even more intelligent? Or... What did your classmates think, yeah. actually? Um, yeah, um, so drawing back to what I mentioned earlier, you know, you see some that tend to that tend to come across as more high-achieving, you know? Mm. The ones that are, you know, take on leadership positions, prefects, uh, always scoring better in the class, always raising their hand. Did you, think, you, guys, hmm? did you think that those people mm-hmm. uh, doubled down on it once they found out they were on the gifted program? Like, I, I kind it, of felt like they were, I mean, they were the kind that would have thrived in the environment, any environment they were in. Okay. You know, they just have that, it's, it's I mean, I, I mean, I don't want to, I, I don't want to do like, like, like speak badly of it, but it's like they, this is very Singaporean mindset in a way. They just want to achieve as much as possible. Sure. In fact, it's great. You know, I know some of them. They turn out to be um, scholars, mostly scholars. <laughs> I think a banker is here, or two, uh, here or there. But like you see those people with that success formula, you know, and then you see some people who got in there like by like like we said about um, how you, there's something that makes you gifted. Mm. I would define that as thinking differently, and sometimes differently means that you. It makes you more anxious about the environment around you, and that mm-hmm. I think I believe that was me. You know, okay. I mm-hmm. yeah. But whether thinking differently is a, is a is a positive or not, you know, that actually remained to be seen. So in mm-hmm. the time, I personally I didn't felt I didn't feel very encouraged by it. Okay, I'm not. I wasn't encouraged, but I wasn't I wasn't particularly motivated in knowing that I was in an elite class. Right. You know, and there are there are friends of mine who who like that as well. You know, in fact, the friends that I made were the ones who struggled together. You know, right. so talking mm-hmm. about the environment and expectations, mm. knowing that there was this solidarity, you know, I mean, helped us a little bit more. Mm. You know, so like, yeah, people experience it different ways. Right. I mean, yeah. the, just a question. I, I think before we can go on, I think one very important thing that we, we should try to establish is what exactly is a gifted child? Mm. Right. What are the definitions of a gifted child? Maybe, mm. I, I mean, you've been through it. What do you think is the definition of being a gifted child? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So... To that note, my uh, what office my I mentioned how the tests previously were mostly sort of the like IQ tests, you know, like reasoning tests, you know. So they were, I think they were trying to see, figure out who would be again think more of the box and think at a higher level, like again English versus literature, you know. I think maybe my strong suit was actually English, like, you know. If we if us Singaporeans like we took the New South Wales tests, I remember mm-hmm. getting a medal for my English. Uh, at the time, so that was because you know you if you if anyone remembers the the, the type of questions they gave you, mm. it's a lot of like critical reasoning. Right. You know, like, like the stuff that you see on entry exams is like banking or consulting jobs. You know, right. mm. so it's again about that that next level of cri- critical thinking. Right. And, but the funny thing is actually I learned that this sort of critical thinking can be cultivated. Mm. You know? mm. So yeah, I think that's what, and uh, maybe I'm I wasn't as strong in math or science, 
So I believe there is some extent of this in, in these STEM subjects as well. Right. right. Yeah. What What do you think is your definition of giftedness or... Right. I mean, I think everyone probably will have to develop their own sense of what is important and what's what they're good at. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, as long as you know that you have a, a keen intuitiveness to something, that mm. something comes naturally to you and you're good at it, mm-hmm. then that, that to me is a giftedness. I, I agree that to a large extent, this can also be cultivated. Right. I think the intent of the program that I, I am... Uh, um, I am okay with and I, I ultimately I think the spirit of the program is good and supporting people who do have that you know if you are told very early on hey you're good at this mm. let me help you be better at it right I think that intent is good I mm. think the branding and I, you, yeah. I want to hear your views on it as well but I I think the branding of it that the delivery of it to me is very very uh, ineffective right so i'll give an example it's one thing to say you know hey we're going to do every we're going to make everyone go through a test if you do well or if you if you hit our our criteria you are gifted mm-hmm. but the implicit statement that's not said is that everyone else is not gifted mm-hmm. right which is a really weird thing to say right uh, and i mean i personally just like you mentioned you know, going through a Singapore education system. Thankfully, I don't think I'm there anymore. But when I was in primary school, uh, I definitely was grades meant everything to me, mm. right? So if I didn't, if I wasn't told that I was the best by my teachers or mm. by my exam results, then I thought mm-hmm. I was a failure, right? Right. So when I found out that I was not gifted, then and I I know for a fact that it wasn't just me. Like, a lot of us were like, well, what does that mean about us? Mm-hmm. Right? Are we not good? Mm-hmm. And I remember like that was a very weird thing to go back to my parents and be like, I didn't get in. Uh, right. I'm not gifted. And then I, I, can't, I actually can't remember what my parents said. So, I mean, I mean, w- so what you're saying is that we, we can't alienate the fact that giftedness does exist. Yeah. I mean, I, uh, I, not only that. Okay. So again, key point, giftedness exists. And probably we, a lot of people have gifts of their own right? right there is a non-zero probability that people don't have gifts okay. i wouldn't deny that but you know i would say a lot of people probably do have gifts and I, I think the key thing about the program is that it helps people identify early on if they have signs that they that they have certain gifts in certain areas okay. to, to develop this early on right but then the, the assumption there is that you know there are other people who also are gifted it's just that you wouldn't know later mm-hmm. you wouldn't know until later on right yeah, um, so the traveling of this, um, yeah, I, I, I agree with what you said about like, stand, like standardized testing or at least like um, figuring out, like spotting talents early on. You know, but I, I do feel personally that I know I haven't, I, I was not on the other side. I wasn't told that I wasn't gifted. Right. Um, but then I realized, I felt over time that this is actually maybe too early. Right. You know, because I mean, okay, so the GP test was to some extent a standardized test. So let, let me offer you this where. I mean, if we, if we flip the script and look at it from a, maybe from a physical attitude instead of mental attitude. Sure. Mm. Imagine if you know, everyone took the NAPA test and, and, they, and they chopped off the top 0.25% of, uh, of, of NAPA, NAPA test takers and said, hey, you, know, you, are, you are physically gifted you know, and you are, and, and we're going we're gonna to give you special education that sort of maybe preps you to become an Olympian in the future. Right. Imagine if it was, it was that superficial. Now, this 0.25% they, and they didn't even know how good, how much further the the, the NAPA scores were above the rest, you know. Right. So it's just it's just by this like metric, you know. Right. It's there is a way to to perceive uh, success, but at this stage, there's just so much around it that we don't know. Yeah. Um, you, you know, I I think highlighting this is very. This is actually another study that was done very interestingly mm. about physical prowess. And if you take it, for example, uh, uh, how many professional athletes, right? actually at the age of uh are actually born in the beginning of the year than they were at the end of the year. you'll find that actually a large portion of uh, professional athletes are born between the uh, the months of january till june oh yeah yeah and one that's of the re- an interesting yeah and one that. of the reasons was because yeah. they uh, at uh, for example uh, every year right when they go for for example uh, uh, a selection process or something like this right they are for example if they are born in january and their classmates were born in December, they are already one year ahead in terms of physical as well as uh, physical development. 
Sure. So definitely they could perform much better. And at every level, they were actually mm. far ahead because just simply because of development cycles right. of their bodies. Mm. And in the end, they are trained to become professional athletes in the end. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, I was, yeah. I was also going to say, I don't think your scenario is actually that foreign. It is something that used to happen in in, in mm. cities where, you know, they would need to train for military use no, okay. or they would yeah. need to, to start preparing for 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 sending people out to be scouts and all this kind of stuff. Mm. They would they would find early on uh, some of this talent. Mm. And I think it, it speaks more to the priority of the state, mm. right? In this era, uh, and then continuing now, the priority of the state is to build uh, brain talent, right? Mm. People who are smart. Mm. I, I agree with you. I think I am very mixed about the the whole process of taking people out and putting them in a different program, I think you can still develop talent and be specialized without necessarily taking them out. Mm. I and I think that has to be the approach, right? It's it's something that they're speaking to right now with the revamp of the PSLE mm. uh, and the banding program, where they're saying like instead of giving you an aggregate score, we're going to give you an indication of where your strengths are. Yeah, mm. but but the irony is that I mean there are many many studies right where they put in a, a young child was placed within uh, a, a bunch of people who are uh, very, uh, for example, well-disciplined or intelligent. And the child is raised and groomed to be just as intelligent as well. Right. Uh, whereas if they were put in, uh, for example, a group of uh, individuals who are, uh, for example, not very disciplined or come from very various kinds of difficult backgrounds, right? They, they will yield different kinds of results as well. Right. So I, I suppose this this is a this is a tough bit that, uh, that we need to come I mean, to, to understand as well, right? Um, how exactly, I mean, should we then segregate people um, into programs that may then be able to expound their, their intelligence or their, their talents? I, no, I'm sorry, I don't know? think you should separate. I think mm. you need to give people what they need in order to thrive. But could it also be the fact that by doing so, we, are, we might be stunting a potential person that may be able to excel far beyond their capabilities? Mm. Mm. Oh, actually, I, I, have, I actually have some thoughts on this that actually relate to the whole uh, education, uh, education system like okay. comparing Singapore to US because US, you know, like the college system they have, you know, from all through high school, you know, down in fact to college, you know, you get time to explore what you want, figure out who you are, mm. you know. In fact, in the US college, the four-year college in US, you get the first two years to be, to do apparently whatever you want. And then the third, and maybe mm. your, even as late as your fourth year, you get to specialize what kind of field you want to be in. Mm. In Singapore, you know, as a very small 50-year young country, 50-plus year young country, mm. we we don't have that privilege. You know, they it's a very economical, very it's a it's a very yeah very economical look to it. Mm. Where you know, like again, streaming, you know, polytechnics or that, you know, mm. where they're just trying to fit people into their best mood as soon as possible. Actually, on the side note, I mean, in the yeah. US, there are also gifted schools as well, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I yeah, mean, there are plenty yeah. of gifted schools. It's not a foreign concept. Mm -mm, uh, yeah. I I think. And again, like the gifted education program is interesting in the sense that, look, when you were talking about all the different kinds of uh, curriculum mm -hmm. that they had involved, I realized I didn't know any of that until mm. just now. Mm. And I think a big part of that was because when I went through the school system, all my supposed like, primary school friends that were cheapest, when they disappeared, because I was in a non-cheap school, mm. when they disappeared, I just didn't care. <laughs> mm. I was like, well, they're gone. <laughs> And like oh. now I have to continue living my life. <laughs> yeah. And like I never had to interact with a GP again. Right. right. Well, we talked about the definition of GP, but maybe let's let's see what exactly is some some people have to say what is the definition of GP. Right. So I pulled this out from Huffington Post. Okay. And I think this is a, a, a to try to explain their definition of what is a gifted child. So uh, in, in this particular Huffington Post, it says, I give the child, or by definition, children who give evidence of high performance capability in areas such as intellectual, creative, creative, artistic, leadership capacity, or specific academic fields, and who require services or activities that not ordinarily provided by the school in order to fully develop such capabilities. So, and, and, and I suppose that there's some, uh, there's some things that I, I suppose could, uh, uh, could come up quite uh, easily right here, is that must, for example, must a gifted child be proficient, for example, in language, mm. for example, which is very, I mean, we talk about standardized tests, right? right? A child could be very creative, right? And it's almost like savant, right? Mm. They are really intelligent, uh, but they're not very good at words. Right. Will they survive a gifted education program or will they even be selected in the gifted education program? 
Um, yeah, actually, I've yeah I've met I've met friends in yeah, Henry Park. You know, in the primary school you get education where where they you know they have breakdowns every other two hours. Actually, like genuinely socially inept. You know, I I look fine compared to them. You know, and mm. yeah. So it's um I think at that time it was still um. It, it it was still I mean, it was still an intellectual test rather than a mm. you know, test of social skills or test of other other sorts of aptitudes. Right. You know, right. so but at the same time I think being in that environment helped these people as well, where they get teachers who are I would say uh, a little more I don't know if they're more understanding or they're more or they're high expectations, mm. you know, where I mean to put it rather bluntly, you know, say, oh, mm. you know, this could this this um uh, this lack of uh, social aptitude could be compensated by intellectual aptitude. Right, you know, right. I'm so, actually curious. Yeah. Right, how were your teachers? Well, like uh, I, I guess you're, you you yeah. are giving one narrative, and probably mm. it would be unfair to extrapolate that to all GEP teachers. Yeah. But you know, personally, what was your experience like with your teachers? Uh, I mean, I've had some good ones and bad ones. Um, and I would I wouldn't say. I mean, they, I get. I'm presuming they were taught to be more, like I would say, more patient. You know, uh, with, with, with regards to what we're learning, but maybe perhaps in a different way as to how they teach a rowdy kid. You know, right. a person with like with, with terrible attention span. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think they they've had this. I, with what I remember, they have this. Uh, maybe they're trying to have this sort of like agenda to sort of like push us right. as well. You know, to be more critical of our work. You know, and to be more to expect higher standards. Right. So I, they would they would keep asking questions. Right? Yeah, they were trying to. Yeah, they're trying to like basically. Oh, it, 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 it might not even expand to just number what, what kind of questions they ask. It's just right. the amount of work they put on us. Um, <laughs> what you do, you know. Right. So yeah, I've had those that try and have to go very hard on the tough love. And I don't think that that helped. Right. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. like throwing books out of class and all that. Trying to oh be yeah. Like, trying to be like yeah the bad cop. You know. And I've had those teachers and I wasn't in GP. See, there you go. So, see, no, it's I'm a, not sure if that's a GP only thing. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. See, fair enough. You know, so it's uh I, I don't think they were like I, I don't think they were that much more uh spectacular, you know. I mean mm. all due respect to my previous uh, primary school teachers. Mm, yeah. mm. Right. Anyway, yeah. just just how I just just now we talked about who exactly was the contributor for this particular definition. So it's it's by Dr. Gail Gross. Uh who actually is a PhD in uh, human behavior and parenting and education expert. Uh, just to let you know, just the, the article actually goes on to identify the characteristics of a gifted child. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it would be cool to actually talk about what exactly is the symptoms of a gifted child. So they, they, they offer two uh, differences in sexes, but let's maybe read what a gifted child who is a female is like, all right? Mm-hmm. So the following are common characteristics of a female gifted child. She likes school especially causes in science, music, and art. She likes her teachers. She regularly reads news, new, uh, magazines, and, uh, and other non-required reading. She's active in drama and musical productions. She does not go out on dates as often, and she's a daydreamer. And the definition for guy is he dislikes school. Mm. He dislikes teachers and thinks that they are uninteresting. He does little homework. His, he dislikes physical education and seldom engages in team sports. He's regarded as radical or unconventional. He often wants to be alone to pursue his own thoughts and interests. That's uh, so and, weird. Uh, <laughs> and slightly problematic. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, just, it's, a, it's a bit of a double standard there. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, I mean, we have definitions of, I mean, coming from a behavioral PhD science mm. doctor, which says that the symptoms of, of a gifted child is someone who is totally disinterested in school. Mm. Now, how, how do we come to terms with what exactly do you have for example, at yeah, primary four, primary four means we're about like 10, or is it yeah, nine? Yeah. 10, nine, yeah. nine, nine, 10, all right. Nine, so, nine, 10, yeah. yeah. So at that age, uh, do you think that, do you think that you were disinterested, disinterested in school and homework and stuff or? Mm, I can't say I loved it. <laughs> so I, I wasn't completely disinterested, but yeah, at that point, I remember just wondering about how, was what I was learning practical. Was it was I mean what was the point you know like and in fact this mentality carried me all the way through university where mm. it's like what I'm learning how can I apply it you know it doesn't really it doesn't inspire me mm-hmm. you know so going that, that that part about wanting to pursue your own uh, thoughts and dreams and all that right yeah, I think that might that might resonate with me more mm. you know, because yeah I just I just didn't see the point of studying for an well, exam I'm I'm very pleased with that definition because it, it means I'm gifted yeah. <laughs> right. see, yeah, yeah. I- probably gifted at some point i definitely did not want to do my homework yeah. right a couple of times yeah. uh 
yeah, I mean, I also think it's probably a confluence of different things mm-hmm. that kind of attribute to that. Um, one question that I have that I think would be interesting is, I wonder what the results, if MOE ever did a post hoc study of what happened to all our gifted education students, right? Right? Like, did they actually say, you know, we took everyone who went through the gifted education program, we're going to measure... Uh, and again, this in itself is controversial. What do you measure, mm. right? <laughs> uh, we're going to measure their uh, monthly salaries uh, mm. at, you know, at the starting salary, right, right, right. Or maybe do we measure their overall critical? Like we give them a new critical test, like a, a IQ test at that point, right. or do we give them like contributions a, to society? Yeah. Like um, what are we measuring, and what are we trying to output? Right. Because uh, you mentioned that a lot of people went on to become scholars. Um, that in itself is a bit difficult for me to to attribute directly to GEP because I went through, I mean, I went to a Raffles Institution and I became a scholar. Uh, and so I can attribute these scholars to also having, by virtue of being in a GEP program, gone to some of these good schools, mm-hmm. right? It may be more of the school and the brand mm-hmm. rather than your actual ability. Right. Um, so mm-hmm. does the GEP actually create a specific kind of output and the people that we have, I mean, we're glad to have you. You you definitely sound like you've thought a lot about that experience for you, which in itself, I don't know, if, would you attribute that ability to think uh, critically about your own experience mm. as something that was seeded by the GEP? Mm. But, um, um, fun fact, I actually applied for a reference institution with a, with a score of 260 for PSRE. Didn't get in. So, oh, wow. Uh, yeah, so I see the direct comparison right here. Right. right. Um, yeah, I think for... I mean, put, I mean, maybe one way to look at it is that Singap- the Singapore education system is facing a uh, playing game of probabilities. Right. You no, know, they're just trying to reinforce success that way, right. and hopefully, it leads to you know, it, it leads to more it leads to more success coming out of this of this little pocket. You know, but then yeah, I mean, and what, success, yeah, but yeah. again, success by what definition? Oh yeah, mm-hmm. like you know, um, I guess in this case, uh, academic performance. You know, academic right. prowess, yeah. prowess, right? right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, actually, for me, it actually goes back to uh, it goes back to this idea of Singapore being a young state with a need to push out as much human capital as possible. Right. So, like uh, again, in in other countries, uh, US, UK, mm-hmm. they they can they get to measure people by the by or at least they get to measure success by again maybe music ability, artistic ability. You know, in Singapore, we need just we, we need uh, people and we, we need knowledge capital. You know, we only have this many factors to judge it by, and right. also it goes more like. Like you look at them, we need more maybe accountants and lawyers and doctors and all. It all goes down to things like STEM, and which all flows back to uh, it all flows back to to academic performance. You know, okay. yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And 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 I would I would challenge that a bit mm-hmm. and say that that vision of a, of, of a country or mm-hmm. or what a country ought to be is taking a very very workforce view on it. Mm-hmm. Right. It's basically mm-hmm. saying that uh, the people are are meant to be. Uh, you know, inputs into workforce and mm-hmm. how to create outputs for the country. Uh, it doesn't really see the country as uh, as a group of people trying to create a quality of life, trying mm-hmm. to live well, trying to, mm-hmm. to, to build families or to mm-hmm. build societies. Um, and that is where artists and musicians mm-hmm. and, and, and poets and, right. and thinkers all mm-hmm. come in. And, and the point I'm trying to land at is that some people would say, you know, I'm willing to make a short-term sacrifice. Mm. Like we don't need all of that now. All mm. we need is a workforce in order to get our GDP up. Yeah. Right. Um, but I, I, I question that, and I say, you know, at, at, now we're already starting to see a bit of a social fallout from all mm-hmm. of this, right? Mm-hmm. Where you have elitism. It's a, it's a bit naive to say that elitism doesn't exist, mm. right? Sure. You have uh, people who treat. Uh, a certain... But I'll, I'll I'll counter this point. What was that? Was that needed for society to function? Was that needed for society to advance or progress? I mean, if if at that Elitism? point, of time, uh, at least some level of uh, for example, uh, yeah, a gifted education program, for example, to develop these things, and for, of course the uh, repercussions of having such a program could be elitism, for example. Right. But could Again, be a necessary when, function. When you say function, mm-hmm. you're assuming. A certain perspective of what it means for a country to function. Sure, of course. Right, uh, and I think it was very obvious. It was an economic position that we needed to get right. uh, Singapore to, right? Mm-hmm. Mm. So I, I think, I mean, I, I would see that. For my view, was that it, 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 it tries to serve 
an economic or economic gain at least. Mm. Uh, but unfortunately, the fallout uh, potentially was uh, dividing society by elitism. And it's yeah. continuing to be. I don't think we should of use course. the past tense on this. Of course. I mean, look, I mean, I, I am neither a jeep <laughs> or a scholar. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I went through life as a very normal student. Right. Yeah, not, not really cool. I just want to point out something that maybe could add some dimension to this discussion. I mean, apart from elitism that's been, pre, been bred. I mean, if really the focus was about economic gain, right? Mm. And if the focus was about trying to, uh, trying to say that um, um, uh, we want to make productive people in society that actually can contribute, then the question would be, how about those who are late bloomers? Right. Right. I mean, I mean, look at this from the point of view. Um, if you leave school mm -hmm. and then you go on to be, uh, and then you didn't do well in school, but you want to be very productive people in the future, or you have the potential, why not identify those people who didn't survive the school system, for example? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I have a question for you, Willie. You have mm -hmm. kids. Yeah. If uh, your kids are not in primary school yet, right? No. Right? No, no. That's still a while away. If they... If the G program is still there, uh, and you know they do the test, and let's do two scenarios. Mm -hmm. If they get into the program, mm -hmm. what would you say and, and and encourage? And 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 if they didn't get into the program, what would you say and encourage? Well, firstly, firstly, I just want to highlight something. Uh, my kids are homeschooled, mm -hmm. so sure. <laughs> okay. So uh, that's so a totally get... different story altogether. But right. assuming <laughs> that my kids were in the um, the um, uh, school, system. Yeah, partner, school system and assuming they got into the Jeep program. I mean, I'll tell them, for example, there's one very important thing is that you may be identified as a gifted child right now, but you may not be a gifted person in the end of the day. Yeah, and I think it's very important to identify that it must follow through and uh, giftedness, I think, or even being productive members of society, you have to be constantly upgrading mm. and constantly uh, using the gifts and skills that you have. Mm. If not, it's really a waste. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I think that's 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 what I will tell my children essentially. But I, I I mean I just want to come back to the point of late bloomers and mm -hmm. the fact that late bloomers can be gifted. That's my mm -hmm. opinion, right? Mm -hmm. uh, maybe or it could be the fact that they are not identified within an educational academic framework mm -hmm. of their giftedness, right. and they actually fall through the cracks. Right? Yeah, I think that uh, there are many late bloomers. Like for example, I, I think I was really an idiot when I was young, but as I grew older, I think. I think I was able to articulate my thoughts a lot better. Mm -hmm. And that was that was much later in my life. Right. So I wanted to point out, for example, there are people who are who actually acquire their savant nurse, right? Uh, later in life, either through accident or some form of uh, emotional trauma. And they became what we call the the things like for example, acquired savant syndromes as well. Mm -hmm. That they become like really, really intelligent. Uh, like for example, a, a person who suddenly knows how to play. Uh, piano at right. the age and in his late thirties, and he can play professional piano when he didn't didn't even know how to play the piano in the first place, right. because he had an accident with a car. Would you <laughs> would you send your kids to GEP um, if they got in? Huh. The hypothetical huh. kids, of course. I I guess in this case, I mean, I didn't come up with a word for it, you know, and. It will actually be more of a certain, like on ground assessment because I mean if mm. they are comfortable with the current environment you know, and they I can see they have a potential to succeed in a non GB uh, uh, environment I I let them have the choice um, but I think the reason in fact my mother explained to me the reason why she sent me to GP was that she felt that I wasn't you know, I was completely bought off you know I was completely alien in my current environment you know, mm. in another primary school and then she felt that you know sent sent me to this place where there so many people are, you know. Are, yeah, they think on a different level or they, and some of them are anxious for it, you know. Mm. It, it's, it's, this, uh, it's just this environment where I found people I could relate to. And right. funny enough, I did, you know. So, yeah, to me, to that extent, socially, GP helped me. Mm. Intellectually, uh, yeah, yeah. not much of a difference, actually. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. I'm very mm. curious. I would want, I think it would be useful. Mm -hmm. I, actually, let me, let, me, let me bring this question back to you, which is, if your child, right, was, uh, uh, went for the GP test and didn't get the GP results, for example, like, like yourself, right? Uh, it, it failed, for example, or rather not, was, he, did, he didn't get in, he didn't get through the screening. He or she, yeah. Yeah, he or she. So what, what will you tell? Okay, sure. What will you tell them? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I mean, the first thing I would say is that this test is meant to evaluate your ability at that point in time mm -hmm. but you know you are on your own journey and you're going to discover your own talents and gifts and right and you know 
when you do discover them, like I want to be able to uh, help you grow them as much as you want. Mm -hmm. So take your time. Like it's not, it's, yeah. there's no rush. Uh, and but would you tell them that they are not gifted as per definition at that point of time? No, I would just say that that test mm. did not evaluate uh, you to be gifted and that's that that's test metric. But that doesn't mean that you're not gifted, right? Mm -hmm. And that doesn't mean that you would not develop or find out what your talents and gifts are at a, at a different point in time. Mm, okay. So it seems like there must be some form of like um, uh, cushioning as well, I suppose, to say that, you know, um, you are gifted in other areas or you're just not gifted at this point juncture in time. I wouldn't call it cushioning. I would call it framing. Yeah. Okay. Because it, it, we have to realize that that is what the test is. It is an evaluation at a point in time mm -hmm. of what they consider giftedness, mm. right? And so you can push back against those two things, meaning mm. A, you know, you, you may not realize how to flex your gifts right now. Mm. And B, it may not be the gifts that you are actually good at. Like, you know, these are GP, uh, general knowledge skills and, and, and mm -hmm. math and, and English, mm -hmm. according to what they define it also. Sure. Sure. Yeah. So actually, I agree with Robert here in this case where mm. it is, yes, not everyone is gifted, but whether how long that giftedness takes to uh, that takes to form, yeah, it definitely is an entire spectrum. It's not, it's not a either got it or you don't, right? right. It is like at what at what point in time does it show and what context? Right. You know? mm. So now again, it's still just these three tests. You know, it, it really does not define. Okay, I think even some people can be gifted in terms of at, uh, attitude, in terms of work ethic. You know, the ability to the ability to, to, to study or learn new things for hours on end. Right. You know? so, can, I, can I ask you a question? So, do you think everyone is gifted? Uh, I mean, not very PC to say, but in short, no. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, it's just, uh, but there are so many different ways to measure it. Maybe even ways that I can't even fathom myself. You mm. know, uh, what kind of discipline or what kind of, or, or again, what kind of uh, model of thinking, you know, there's so many possibilities. And, and to add to that, right, I don't mm. think someone needs to be necessarily gifted for them to be worthy of mm. some form of engagement in any way, right? And what I mean is that you can be completely, uh, I, I don't like using these terms, but you could be completely average, mm. right? In everything that you do, but you could be good uh, at, 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 at a point in time for something. Mm. And at that point, then how do how do we engage each other on those merits? Like, what do you want to do? What are you interested in? Mm. You know, you may not be the best at it, but you mm. are good at this, mm -hmm. right? And you want to do it, let's do it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and and that goes back to a more sincere form of human engagement, which is imperfect, mm. which is real according to the humanity that we have compared to this mm -hmm. utilitarian calculation of who's mm -hmm. the best, how do we make sure that you are maximizing mm -hmm. your output to the country, yeah. to the motherland, and right, all yeah. that stuff. Right. right? Uh, and I think that that is what is important. And it's something that as it's, it's a bit of a, of an interesting uh, irony because we are able to reflect upon all of this, all three of us are educated Singapore system wise. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're able to reflect on all of this a bit, a, a big part because of our education. Mm -hmm. Right. And now we are able to look back at it and say, ha, huh, like it wasn't really that uh, ideal of, a, of an environment, mm -hmm. but 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 you know we can always aspire to make things better. Of course, yeah. Um, yeah. And I think education is one arena where we need to continue doing that for the next few generations. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah. So on that note, I think drawing back what you said about how the Singapore education system takes a, a very workforce centric approach and that as and there's ramification society. Fully agree on that. You know, it's just that at this time, you know, growing so having to grow as fast as little resources we have. I mean, that was just the situation and it definitely needs to change at one point in time as you grow more. Right. Um, and now you're right. You know, so what maybe, uh, what I would personally de uh, determine as gifted, you know, is being at a high level, right? Maybe basically doing something that is definitely different from most, uh, yeah, from, from, from the kinds of most people. It could be any aspect. So think about like who was successful in, successful in business. If mm -hmm. I remember correctly, feel free. To, to check me if I'm wrong, the, like the people like the popular skin king, you know, like lowly educated. So many of these like ITE businessmen, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, clearly by the Singapore system, the education, they're, they're not gifted, but, but they've done well in business and business is definitely not easy. Are they right. gifted in business that way, you know, or, or is, it can't be the business is that easy, right? So no, it, you, it does take a very special talent yeah. 
to yeah. be able to navigate this. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So mm. to that extent, by all all all, all means, uh, through the civil education system, they are not gifted, but they took time. You know, they took. You know, and I have so many friends. You know, IT, poly, whatever. You know, mm. it's a. Yeah, it's, it's like what they say about Ratatouille, right? You know, it's a uh, the end the end of the movie. They said, you know, anyone can cook. It doesn't mean it doesn't mean cooking is for everybody, but a great sh- not everyone can be a great chef. Right. But a great right. chef can come from anywhere. You know. Mm-hmm. So imagine, and in fact, if you get even more superficial, you know, how many friends do you know who used to be fat, ugly, or angry, and then five years later, you know, puberty has done so well for them. Right. You know, they bloom. Right. Right. Mm. So intellectually, that that happens as well. Mm. Very, very easily. You know, I think this discussion is really more than just encompassing GP as a whole. It even talks about the educational process, yeah. the focus of the nation's uh, direction in educating, or what it try, what kind of uh, output is trying to maximize as well. Mm. It really is quite a dynamic kind of conversation. I, I don't think we can <laughs> complete it in one one yeah. hour. No, no, <laughs> we well, can't. I yeah. mean, we will probably do a lot more episodes on different aspects of education mm. as well in Singapore, but. Yeah. Uh, no, this was a very interesting episode. I think so yeah. too. And you know what? Thanks, Greg, for coming on yeah. today. You definitely are uh, the gifted one right here. You are a gift to this episode. Yeah, gift to this episode. Exactly. I'll take it. <laughs> so anyway, thanks for tuning in, guys. And uh, we will see you in the next episode of SG Explained. Yes. All right. See you guys. Have a good night. Yeah.